J2EE is a large subject, but with the information that you got from this course, you shouldn't find any surprises. There are lots of details here and there that you will discover as you go along. That's because the system contains so much that it's almost impossible to cover it all. But you should know now exactly what J2EE is and how it works. And you should know which parts of it are going to require some effort on your part. Java server pages are not that difficult. Write one and you have the form of them clear in your head. Basically, you write HTML code and stick some Java code in whenever you feel like it. The JSP process compiles and executes the code and produces some more HTML and the whole thing becomes one big web page. Servlets are, in a way, the opposite of Java server pages. In a servlet, you write a Java class that has some HTML code inside it. When you execute the class, it outputs the HTML. Java server pages and servlets are almost interchangeable. You should use the one that you're most comfortable with. If you're more at home with HTML, that will probably be a Java server page. If you're more at home with Java, you probably will find it easier to write servlets. Basically, anything you can do with one, you can do with the other. It's just a matter of the approach. But you need to know both Java and HTML, no matter which one you choose. Working with a database is a large subject. It isn't that it's really complicated, it's just that it's done so often that everybody has lots of opinions about it. You can read things about organization and normalization and so on, and if you work around database folks, you'll hear them talk about these things a lot. There are some fortunate things about SQL. It started out as an attempt to standardize database access, but it became fragmented into several different dialects, and each dialect behaved differently. This trend has reversed. The SQL used in Java is SQL 92, and it's almost identical among the different databases. You can find differences, but they're minor, and they can usually be ignored, except in the most special cases. There are different kinds of enterprise Java beans. There are stateless session beans and stateful session beans. There are entity beans and message beans. There is a degree of standardization among the beans, but there is one variation. Different servers act very differently. It's the server that contains the beans and manages the communications to and from the beans, and the servers all do it differently. This course concentrated on the contents of the beans themselves and showed you how beans can be deployed using the Sun's reference or standard server. But you're almost certain to be using a different server and they each have their own deployment software. You can find out about the beans themselves from the information in this course, but you'll need to research the documentation that comes with your server to find out how to deploy your beans. A web service is similar to a session bean in that it receives a message from a client and generates a response that is returned to that client. I can't tell you which one to use. You probably should go back through the lessons that explain them while at the same time keeping your application in mind. You may find that one is more suitable than the other. Right now, you probably feel like you only have a vague notion of just what all this is about and how to use it, and that's okay. This is not a starting point, this is an ending point. When you're in the midst of designing your software system, now that you know J2EE and how it works, you'll naturally see places where you can use J2EE. Nothing ever fits exactly, but you could find that a collection of beans or a herd of servlets is just what you need to do a certain job that you need done.